Okay, I think that's working. How is everyone? Everyone doing good? Morning to everyone. So, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yes, okay, perfect. So welcome to day two of Indie Writer Fest. Um, thank you so much for signing up to Publishing Mistakes and Revised Editions. I hope you all I hope you all have pen, paper. Make sure you have a beverage. Certainly, if you need coffee, I understand. And um, yeah. So my name is Kate Callahan, and I was born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. And I am a dark fantasy author and um, currently I have published two YA dark fantasy novels called Crown a Traitor and Where Traitors Fall and they are part of a hellish fairy tale series and the third book is coming out on the 22nd of February and like that I have made many 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 mistakes and I will make many many more and like that, if you are a writer and you're thinking about publishing, let me tell you, you are going to make plenty of mistakes. Plenty. And um, so like that, I have a couple of notes and uh, a couple of kind of key points that I want to talk about. And then after each point, I will stop and I will ask you guys if you have any questions, if you want me to go into any more detail, um, just so that way you're able to get the most out of this. Um, rather than me just talking uh, constantly and uh, also at the end there will be you will also get like the packet that I'm talking from in an email so any resources that I mention you will also get in an email so yeah I have a few questions to ask you guys first though so if you there is a raise hand button and um at the bottom of your screen so if you so if I ask a question and um, you if you just click raise hand and then I will know the answer or you can say it in a little chat beside um so who has already published anyone you can just click fantastic oh amazing How do I, sorry, hold on, I'm trying to figure this out. No, sorry. Okay, fantastic. So we have a good few people who have published, amazing. And anyone want to do a revised edition? And like that, or even want to do a relaunch like that? Um, for some reason, hmm. ah, I figured it out, I figured it out, sorry, my goodness, um, I couldn't see who, who was raising hands, okay, I figured it out, um, maybe one day, okay, yeah, that's perfect, um, like that, you can always, um, like that, there's, and like that, is anyone here just considering, um, indie publishing or traditional publishing, I say, Okay, perfect. Because like that when I'm talking about the few points that I have, then I will just kind of briefly mention between the two if you just want to, which side you want to go into. I'll start from the beginning. So um, like that when you are, so the thing to start off with is, as a, as a warning, is that indie publishing is a business. Um, you are responsible for everything. If you don't want a business where you are responsible for the entirety of the book, promoting, advertising, all the admin, um, you might uh, want to consider uh, traditional publishing. I wish I had known the amount of work that goes into self-publishing. When I started, I just, I'd spoken to a few publishers and I was kind of figuring out between indie publishing and traditional publishing. And uh, yeah, I wish I'd known the amount of work that went into self-publishing. That being said, a lot of people I know that have wanted to self-publish and then have then gone the more traditional route. 
it tends to be because of the amount of work that goes into it and like that being self-published is kind of a slow turtle you know the turtle and the hare it, you get to the same finish line but it's just a slow process and um, so like that you just kind of got to bear with it um but if you're not scared off by the amount of work fantastic it is super rewarding it's super intimate with your readers because everything is very personal um you know like that you can ask for feedback you're in charge of your art team you're in charge of your cover reveal team it just i'll go more into that but it just is very um personal and it's and it's great to be um involved in every process and get to make the decisions about everything about your book um yeah i mean i'm not against traditional publishing whatsoever i think it's an amazing option as well but it's just something to um be aware of there are differences so do plenty of research and um, before you decide anyway so point number one is that when you are creating a book so when you want to publish you will need a isbn so which is like an international barcode number where basically you will this is what like a shop or a store will look up to order your book so if you go with wide distribution um, like Ingram Spark, you would need to buy an ISBN. In Ireland and England, it's by Nielsen, um, is where you can buy an ISBN. In America, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but like that, just always be wary that you don't buy fake ones. There are like cheap ones that are out there. So just be wary. And um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, Bowker in America. I always think it's called Booker, Bowker or Booker, but yeah. Okay, if I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as well. Um, I lost my train of thought. And um, yeah, so basically if you want to do um, wide distribution, like a place like Ingram Spark, you will need to buy an ISBN for every edition of your book. You can't use the same ISBN for every book. Um, you need a new one for hardback, a new one for paperback, and one for an ebook. If you are just doing it with Amazon, then you won't, you don't necessarily need one because Amazon will provide you with a free one or you can buy your own. Uh, ISBNs can be expensive. They're about a hundred euro per one, um, or you can buy a pack, which is usually cheaper to buy a pack if you're going to do multiple editions. With indie publishing, you are responsible for all the costs. You are responsible for everything. So it can get very expensive very quickly. So if you want to limit your costs, you can just go with Amazon. They do have a wide distribution option and you can save money on ISBNs or like that if you want to do wide distribution and try and get your books into as many stores as possible, um, then you can go with somewhere like Ingram Spark. But again, that is an added fee. When I started, I didn't realize that I needed an ISBN for every different edition. And oh, when I say it resulted in many tears, it resulted in many tears. And um, yeah, like that, you're gonna make loads of mistakes, but everything is fixable, everything you can undo, everything you can change. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, but I say the most important thing like that at the beginning is just deciding if you want to do wide distribution or if you want to stick kind of with Amazon. Um, those are your two main points. Both have pluses and minuses, but again, if you just want to kind of start small, test the waters, limit your costs, you can just go with Amazon. Um, that's the first point. ISBNs are, are the first point anyway. And uh, like that. Second point is if you're an indie publisher and you make a mistake on your book, maybe your book has errors in it, maybe you want to change the formatting, you want to change the interior like that, maybe there's an issue, always admit your mistakes. Readers value honesty, especially if you are new to publishing, always admit your mistakes. When I released Crown of Trader and there was, there was mistakes in it, I didn't, I didn't realize how much work kind of went into it. And I kind of just thought, because I'd published two short stories before, I kind of just tossed it out there and hoped, hoped something would happen. But then when it actually got good feedback and people were interested in it, I realized that it was really something I wanted to invest in. And I realized that like that, your book is going to outlive you. So you need to take the time to invest and research 
and make it the best you can do it you know that way like there is no rush on you there's no time but if you do make a mistake like that take your time and fix it if you can um some things will be out of your control but if you can't then just be honest um does anyone have any questions i covered quite a lot there does anyone have any questions on the top on what i was just talking about um um like that i covered a lot quite quickly there so like that don't be afraid to ask any specific questions because that's the great thing about self-publishing is that because you will be if you're kind of doing self-publishing you need to be quite active on social media and because you're so active on social media you will get to know your readers uh, quite well people can reach out to you so it's very it's very easy to create a dialogue with them and you can then be like look i made a mistake but i can fix it and um yeah it just creates a really good relationship between you and readers um how does amazon publishing work um amazon publishing oh in a nutshell kdp is what you use at uh, kindle direct publishing and they um are free to use so there's no sign up fee there are no where is that sorry there is no sign up fee so that cut your cost that cuts your costs there is no isbn fee because they provide you with a free isbn if you decide to do that so amazon is a great cheaper way to get your book out there um like that they do ebooks paperbacks and now hardbacks are on their beta program, which is great. Um, and basically they distribute, they are your distributor. They are your, they print the book for you. They distribute the book for you. Um, it's like your home base um, like that. It's uh, that's pretty much it. They, they will distribute, they're distributors. They will distribute your book for you and they will take, a, they will take a fee from each book sold and like that you can choose your royalty fee it's between 30 percent and 70 percent depending on the cost of your book but yeah they are your distributor um and i draft to digital okay yeah i i haven't used draft to digital i i i, I have no experience with them um yeah you absolutely can get isbn's for free absolutely Yeah, if you use an ISBN that's free, then you can't distribute it to um, like Barnes and Noble or Waterstones or anywhere like that. If you use, so say you get a free ISBN from Amazon and you decide then you want to work with Ingram Spark to do wide distribution to stores like Barnes and Noble, Waterstones, any place like that, you can't use that free ISBN on Ingram Spark. You need a international um, barcode. You need one that will you need to pay for one um in a nutshell um oh, i think there's questions in here as well oh um da, 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 da. how difficult self publishing for you it was it was actually really difficult to be honest it wasn't that difficult to start because i didn't realize how much work went into it um i kind of went into it with a lot of naivety i knew i just didn't want to go the traditional publishing route so i just decided to wing it um it's hard but it's it's rewarding it's like any job there's going to be pluses and minuses to it but it's um it's definitely rewarding um yeah um any advice for being worried to change a book fix mistakes when it's already been published don't worry about changing your book or fixing mistakes the, like I said, your book is going to outlive you. It's going to outlive you. It's going to go to, I'll talk about this in a sec, but it'll go to legal deposits. It'll go to archives. It'll go to libraries. Your book will outlive you. So if you have to change it, if you have to do 10 editions, if you have to change the cover five times, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do, until you feel like it's perfect, don't worry about making changes. 
at all. I was so worried about when I had to redo Crown to Trader. I thought, oh my God, nobody is going to, you know, have faith in me. You know, they're going to think that my books are going to have mistakes in them and they're going to think they're not going to be that well done. But the thing is, is that we all make mistakes. And again, it's a business. No new business is free from errors and mistakes. Like, that's why I say the biggest thing is listen to your readers is the next point. Listen to your readers, but don't read reviews. So when I, so if you're deciding to do a relaunch or you're deciding to publish your book, constructive criticism is, is vital in self-publishing, um, especially when you're considering a relaunch because you want to know, like ask readers, what made reading difficult for them? Was it the editing? the formatting, pacing, does it need a new cover? Does it need a complete rewrite? You know, instead of reading reviews, you can reach out politely to your readers, especially like that if you have people reading your book before it comes out, like an art team, um, then you can ask them what it needs work on. And then that saves you making mistakes later on. But if you're considering a relaunch, or a republish or a new edition, then take the time to talk to your readers and be like, what needs to be changed? How can I change it? And then you can implement that because we only know so much ourselves. And yeah, constructive criticism is vital. Reviews on like Goodreads and Amazon, reading them just tends to destroy your soul. Again, you will get negative reviews. You will get one star reviews. You will get two star reviews. At the end of the day, not every book is for everyone. So don't sweat the reviews either, but it's um, it's really important for constructive criticism to improve, especially when looking at the production of your book, you know, how it looks, how it appears, feedback is the most important. Um, absolutely, that is, that is, yeah, sorry, somebody just said one of my readers reached out to me on Insta and asked if she could let me know some spelling errors in my second book. Absolutely, there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. Um, beta readers are brilliant as well. If you can't afford an editor, you know that way, like, or if you want to do um, like that, a beta team, they betas will read your book beforehand, check for edit, check for mistakes, check for pacing, all that stuff, and then they will let you know how the book is doing. Again, it's all it's all feedback. Um, like that you're creating a product so feedback is really important um, um, da -da -da -da. so so i'm actually going to talk about one of the things so i'm going to talk about some of the things that like i actually changed so um formatting is how your book appears so this is the first edition of my book. I know this is the wrong way around, but this is the first edition of my book. And as you can see, like that was the first page, which just says Crown of Trader and Kate Callahan. Then that was a map that I did myself. Nothing wrong with you doing your own artwork. I know some people that do their own amazing artwork, but again, like, as you can see, it's just a bit small. It's in the center of the page. There's no real layout to it. I sound like I'm bashing my own stuff, but I mean it in a nice way. And then as you can see, like this is the front page just says one book begins that's it nothing fancy to it you know you can decide how you can decide how you want your interior to look if you want it to be really simple if you want it to be really detailed um like that if you feel like you can do it yourself there are loads of resources that you can use there's plenty of youtube videos to teach you how to do it and um, there's software like vellum that you can use which is for formatting ebooks and paperbacks and like that but that has a fee as well um, when I started I just used word document and the kindle creator app and um, I like to say I'm a writer rather than the creating side of it I'm still learning I'm three books in and I'm still learning um, like that hopefully going forward I can do it but at the moment I use a team so like that I have a formatter who formats my book and like that when I decided to do a revised edition, I really thought it was important to make my book look the best that it could because it's a bit like a cover. It 
it's the first impression before they even get to read your book. And you, when somebody walks into a store, when somebody's shopping online, when they see your book, they're like, I want that. What makes that different? What makes that stand out? Again, the same with a cover. That's the important. The look of the book before they even get to the first sentence is, is really important. It's the aesthetics, you know, important at the end of the day. So now, sorry, they're actually stuck on the inside of this book. So I'll use my hardback. So this is the hardback version, but this is the revised edition. So that's, so usually in a paperback, there's two interior pages. There's one page that just has your title. And then there's another page that has, uh, that says Crown of Trader, that's title, a Hellish Fairy Tale is the series. And then Kate Hallam is my name. And then you have the copyright page on this side, dedication. And then this is the new interior. So I had a, I had a map pro professionally done by Eve's World Building. She is amazing because you have to consider what genre is your book as well. If it's an adventure where they travel all over the place, like in Crown of Trader, it's an adventure. They travel all over the map. So I thought it was really important to have a map had one in my first book, but I wanted one that's clearer, easier to stand, shows the whole world that will be covered in my series. You know, will, and you kind of have to ask yourself, will this make reading my book easier? Will readers have a reference? Yes. So that to me was really important to have. And again, like it just makes the like reading experience more enjoyable and it brings the story in. So it's like got like little horns and a crown. So it kind of ties into, you know, kind of traitor. Um, yeah, so like that. With formatting, it is an added expense if you want to hire somebody else to do it. Again, if you want to cut back on costs, you can 100% do it yourself. Oh, thank you. Um, you can 100% do it yourself. I've seen people do incredible stuff formatting themselves. Again, it's time and patience. You just have to take your time and figure it out or like that, you can shop around as well. You can find so many people with different, that charge different prices. You, you know, I've seen people charge 100 quid for formatting. I've seen people charge 500 quid for formatting. You just have to shop around. I always find my people on TikTok and Instagram, slide into those DMs, ask them what, ask them what the rates are, ask, you know, talk to them. Don't be afraid to talk to other authors, don't be afraid to talk to formatters, cover designers, you know, you just have to kind of put yourself out there as much as possible. Um, the font that I used is Garamond. Um, so the font you use as well also depends on your genre. Um, so Garamond is popular among fantasy and then the font size is 12. Um, it'll always be 12. I think anything small, some books are for, are, have a font of 11, but I prefer 12. It just kind of gives more ease of reading. It just makes it easier to read, definitely. Don't, and also be aware with some fonts, try not to go too fancy because you are trying to make it as easy as possible for your readers to read and enjoy. And if the font is too small or too tricky, then it just makes it, more awkward to read um so yeah that's formatting um does anyone have any other questions on formatting oh i have no questions in here um finding beta readers that are trustworthy so personally i have an arc team um, and an arc team as essentially who you send your book to before you send it on. Uh, before you before you hit publish, it's a way of gathering reviews and advanced an ARC, ARC stands for advanced reader copy. Um, traditional publishing houses use them. They're amazing for self-publishing. Um, and like that, an ARC team allow, gives you feed, gives you reviews. Beta readers aren't ARC readers. Beta readers come before the ARC readers. Um, finding ones that are trustworthy, I always err on the side of caution with beta readers. I think it's good to maybe ask people that you already know, like not not particularly friends who who like don't really read or something like that. Like if you 
I've been on like Instagram for a while. You've been talking about your book. You've been building up like your social media and people know that you're writing and are interested in reading. It's kind of trial and error. You can watermark your pages. So say if you're writing in Word document, you can, you can watermark your pages to make sure, make it harder for them to, to steal. But again, pirating is a huge issue in self-publishing or in the book world in general. So there's only so much you can do. But again, you can just talk to people, you know, talk to them, check out their profiles, see if they're, beta, ask them why they're beta readers for other people. And then you can talk to that author and get and just ask for references. That, that's the most you can do. But again, try ask people that, that you know or have some rapport with. Um, and that's all you can really do is just talk to people and, and, and figure it out. Like usually if you like have a conversation with somebody, you can kind of figure out quite quickly where their intentions lie. Um, but th there's only so much you can do. Um, da -da -da -da. Are you just on, um, am I just on Amazon for Crown to Trader or are, or am I on Ingram Spark as well? I use Amazon Ang and Ingram Spark um like that just because I decided to do wide distribution um Ingram Spark is is a great resource to have it, it has got my book in bookstores but they have so I would say with Ingram Spark you have to do your research go through their entire website read everything look up as many videos as you can on Ingram Spark they do have a lot of um They kind of catch you out on a couple of things. Um, for example, they always suggest making returns available for your book, that if you don't have returns available on your book, that people won't buy your book, which is a lie. I've never done, I haven't done returns in my book. People still buy it. Because the thing is with Ingram Spark, if you do returns, you are liable for the return. So you get charged every time somebody returns your book and you don't get charged what you earned from that book you get charged the retail price from your book so somebody buys your book for nine euros you are then charged for that for the shipping cost you are charged for the production cost the printing cost so and then that can put you in a deficit so with ingram spark i am happy to use them but I have learned the hard ways. There has been many crying in showers because of them. But yeah, if you're going to go with Ingram Spark, do as much research as possible. Um, like that, if you want to ask me about that um, on my Instagram or anything like that, like it's at Calan Rider, you can, uh, we can talk more in detail about that. I just, I would need a whole hour to talk about Ingram Spark. <laughs> um, so like I did da, 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 da. Also, the main point I should have said first is that if you are doing a revised edition and if you are doing a relaunch, you need to cancel your distribution first because this takes a really, really, really long time. So if you wake up and you're like, I want to do a new edition, I want this edition off the shelves, you need to cancel your distribution with Ingram Spark or you need to unpublish with Amazon. With Amazon, you can just re-upload new files, but if you want to relaunch and you want to do pre-orders again for the new edition, then you will have to set up a separate title altogether. Um, so yeah, the first thing you have to do is cancel your distribution, unpublish from Amazon and start again, essentially. Um, it, it is a blow to the ego to kind of undo everything you've done and have to do it again, um, but you just gotta do it. You just gotta rip off the band-aid. Um, the thing about unpublishing on Amazon as well is that you will lose your Amazon reviews for that book because you are technically unpublishing it, but you won't lose your Goodreads ones because it'll the new edition will be filed under new edition. So that's one thing to consider. Um, also, is that if, if you decide to do a new edition, but other but stores say so say you're with Ingram Spark, right, and a shop has bought eighteen copies of your book. If you cancel your distribution, but they've already ordered 18 copies of your book, they will then sell on those 18 copies of your book in their store. You can't 
there's no way to stop your book that first edition being sold in stores or take it off shelves there's no way to change that there will be copies of your mistaken edition out there there's nothing you can do to change that so don't sweat that small stuff if you decide oh what have I done I need to try to get all those books back you won't get them back there I am still amazed that kind of trader the first edition has been out of print for almost eight months nine months and the other day somebody still managed to get a copy of the first edition don't know how they did it no idea but they're right there you can't get them back so don't sweat this small stuff um so yeah make sure you cancel your distribution give yourself plenty of time before your relaunch or your new edition and um yeah that's one of the that's that's the first thing um, that you should do to give yourself plenty of time to then because then you can do pre-orders again you can build up the hype again and you just get to start a bit more from fresh um uh, da, 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 da. and again so once you've cancelled your distribution and you have got your new shiny book you've had it formatted then you can go on to I forgot my change for. So after, so we've talked about formatting. So the thing is, is also say you have published your book, but you have a load of mistakes in it. Then you can go on to, you've a load of mistakes. Maybe grammar is not that great. Grammar is not my strongest suit. Not even one why. You don't have to have amazing grammar to be a writer, but you do need a nice editor who is good at it. Um, again, take, finding an editor, will take time to find one who fits your budget, your personality, your style of writing. Um, if you decide to invest in a editor, then really take your time and find one that suits you. Again, you can find one that charges low rates. If, if they have their own small business and maybe they're just starting out, they may charge lower. If you work with them over a long period of time, they can charge you less per book. It's all business relations talking building up a rapport i'm not saying you should ask for discounts um but it's just it's just about finding somebody who you can work with understands your style of writing and again it just takes time beta readers come in if you decide to edit yourself so i decided that i couldn't produce the book to a high enough standard without an editor because after a while, when people keep saying they're finding mistakes, it will drive you crazy. And it's better, for me, it was better to have the peace of mind to be like, I know there's no mistakes in that book. It's been edited, it's been proofread, it's fine. Um, again, if there's still one or two errors, that's fine. Even traditionally published books allow for like six errors per 100,000 words or something like that. So don't sweat that too much. Happens in traditional publishing as well. So if you want to edit yourself, absolutely can if you are amazing at grammar editing finding proofreaders that's thing proofreaders beta readers they will become your editors so they are worth having if you don't have the money to fork out for a editor because they're expensive again it's an added expense self-publishing all the expense comes on to you so if you want to do beta readers you can have a team of beta readers and they will read your book tear it apart nicely nicely um again it's all about finding people that can criticize without hurting your feelings it's, it's all it's all a balance but um yes beta readers are a great option if you can't afford an editor or you don't want to do if you don't want to pay an editor um so yeah so you've cancelled your distribution you've got a beautiful new format it's looking beautiful and uh, it's edited within an inch of its life and looking great. You know, you've got your beta team have done their work, you know. Now it's time to relaunch. So the first thing you want to do with a relaunch, or even launch your book, as I've mentioned kind of briefly throughout this, is you want to um social media will be your best friend um, as an indie author. And, but again, with social media, you don't have to show. You don't have to show your face. You can use a pen name. There's many, many options. There's plenty of authors out there who just use graphics and 
kind of videos with different graphics to kind of show off their books. They aren't front facing on the camera. They don't um, make it super personal. It's all about their books and everything like that. So it's just finding what you're comfortable with. Um, my biggest tip with social media is just to pick one that you're comfortable with. Pick one or two. Personally, I use Instagram and TikTok um, because I, f I find it really fun to like interact with people, make funny videos. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind showing my face anymore. At the beginning, I felt really awkward, but now I don't really mind. Once you get a good few negative reviews, it really thickens the skin. Um, oh, I'm glad you enjoy my TikToks. But um, oh yeah, trust me, after your first year of publishing, you will have very thick skin, very thick skin. Um, yeah, so with social media, start spreading the word. Even when you're writing and, and publishing, post about your journey, post that you're doing this. People love a journey. They want to know what you're writing. They want to know what you're working on. They want to know what tropes are in it, whether you're writing fantasy, romance, crime, mystery, nonfiction. People want to know. Um, the, algorithm, the algorithms are really hard, um, but it's just finding, finding, your, finding your niche and um, like that, I post a lot about um, like other fantasy books or I post mostly about writing now. I don't tend to post about other people's books now just because as an author, I, I, I don't review other people's books now because it's just, I don't know, like this. I personally feel like it's respectful not to review other people's books. Um, but uh, that's, that's just me personally. But um, yeah, it's just slowly but surely the algorithm will, will sort out your feed but it does depend on what you're writing like if you're doing loads of hashtags about like plants and not about books it's all then the algorithm will mess you up but um if you're posting about like books or what you're reading and what you're writing the algorithm will slowly build around that it just takes time to to build up and um da -da -da -da. did you make any marketing mistakes when you were selling you trying to sell your book Absolutely. I so when I started writing Crown to Trader, I didn't have social media at all. I didn't have social media until two years ago because I just didn't enjoy it. I found it very hard on my self-esteem. I found it hard not to compare myself to people. But that was before I discovered Bookstagram. Oh, magic. I discovered Bookstagram randomly and I started posting about the books I was reading. Started, you know met some other people who loved the books that I was reading built up you know you build up friendships slowly like that and then once I said that I was like writing something then it kind of built up into that but I I didn't I posted that I was writing and I didn't talk about what I was writing about so I was writing a fantasy book but I didn't really I just kind of said oh I'm writing a fantasy book I didn't say that like it was an adventure. I didn't say that it was about the daughter of Lucifer. I didn't say that it was an enemies to lovers trope, that it was character driven and not romance driven, that it was for young adult. I didn't know all the keywords that go into marketing a book. Whereas I'm sure if you're on TikTok or on Instagram and an author's talking about their book, they're talking about um, the tropes, you know, the the plot um, the twists the turns they're they're not just saying oh I'm writing a book they're talking about um I'm writing a book with you know lots of twists passion politics you know is it spicy is it adult is it you know it's it's about giving more not you don't have to give spoilers but it's just about giving more about about the book it's like building the tension like a movie trailer you know that way you gotta give them a bit to to chew on um because social media is your bread and butter it is the way you'll make um, connections. It is the way you will make money because if people, because the, the one thing about self-publishing is that everything relies on marketing. If you don't advertise your book, nobody's gonna know it exists. You know, there's no, you know, nobody's paying for a billboard in Times Square, you know, to advertise your book. You have to, you know, send out the little sparks and you know lure people in yes lure them in absolutely you gotta lure them in 
and um and again social media is free instagram is free tiktok is free you know um pinterest is free uh, you can build boards on 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 pinterest using canva and you know be inventive you know you don't have to make videos or reels or, or youtube videos you can come up with your own way that you feel comfortable to post about your book but you do have to be posting about your book um i know there's things out there that are like you don't have to be on social media to to publish but mm, i i would be very hesitant to to try that way um again with social media you also a mailing list is also really essential so when i released when traders rise which is the second book Again, with, with Crown to Trader, I didn't have a mailing list. I didn't have an art team for Crown to Trader. I didn't. I didn't even, I didn't even realize that was a thing. I thought that was a thing only for traditional publishers. But then um, I got talking to another author friend and she was saying that like, oh, an art team and a mailing list are a fantastic way to, to, to spread the word about your book, to give out your book beforehand. You know, you can, you can traditional publishers can give your book for free to up to 2,000 people before it comes out. That's why, you know, when you see a book that has like 13,000 reviews and it's not even out yet, it's because publishing houses have been sending out that book for free to get reviews. So self-publishing can also do that. You can send out your book beforehand. To do this, I use a mailing list. So on my Instagram, there is a link to my website and it literally says, join the mailing list. The mailing list lets people uh join my cover reveal team and art teams book tours giveaways it's a way to like engage with your readers and then give them free goodies as well for believing in you and taking the time to promote your work you know that way like it's it's um it's like a little family you got to build up your your reader family and uh like that they're hyping you up so it's great to be able to like give them sneak peeks and let them be part of your journey as well and um, so for a mailing list, I use MailerLite. Again, it's free. Fantastic. And that allows you to send out bulk emails. And it also allows you to create kind of nice emails to send out um, rather than just a standard Gmail email. Um, and I also use BookFunnel. BookFunnel allows you to create downloadable copies of your book, but it also protects them. So it stops them from distributing it. Um, can you repeat the name of yeah so mailer it's called mailer light and if you have under a thousand subscribers it's free so until and like that if you're self-published it might take you a while to reach a thousand so it's free up until the first thousand and like that you can use canva also free to make pretty graphics for your instagram and your highlights and your email so that's also something something to consider um, I love Canva. I live on Canva for all my promotional stuff. Um, what was I saying? Yes. So BookFunnel allows you to create the download um, for your readers. It gives you can add a link to your email inside it, like a button. People click the button, downloads a copy of your book. That and the thing that I love about BookFunnel is that it's a protected copy, so it stops. It kind of helps prevent against pirating. Um, again, because you could have, you know, 500 people on your mailing list and then you have to be quite careful about, you know, you don't really know who you're sending it to. Um, if you don't go through every single person who signs up and check their profiles and check, you know, you can you can set clauses on your art team that like they have to be a bookish account on social media. They have to have, you know, a certain following. I don't really do any of that, but it's just a way to help you prevent against your book being stolen or resold or anything like that i mean not not resold but you know being distributed um again so now you've got so you've got a mailing list now you can send your mailing lists out your art copies before you publish and that will bring in some reviews before you publish and then um, that and then that'll build up hype that you know once you start sending out emails to your art team or your cover reveal team then they will start sending they will start spreading that news on instagram or tiktok or 
whatever platform they use, Goodreads. And then when your book is actually launched, everyone knows about your new stunning copy. You've showed everyone what amazing changes you've made or if it's your first time publishing, what you've done. And then you will be able to hit publish because you know, you've got some reviews now from your work team. You've got everything set up. Social media has built up some hype for your book and then you can hit publish. So yeah, and the thing is, when you hit publish, you will get a lot of people asking to review your book for free and they will ask for a fee to review your book. Mm. I know people will disagree with me on this. I've seen a lot of things on, on like Instagram and on TikTok being like, oh, well, reviewers deserve to create a live, make a living too. Don't pay for reviews of your book. I've spoken to publishers about this in the past at events. It is the number one way to lose credibility as an author if you are paying for reviews. Even if that person reviewing is saying, I will do an honest review. Once you've paid for a review, it's not seen as credible. So, because then if you're say you're self-published and then you want to go on and then say a publishing house reaches out to you and says, we want to take on your book. We want to, you know, we want to accept your book into our house or whatever. Not that that's the end goal, but that might happen, you know. And then it turns out that you've paid like 50 or 100 people to review your book. It, it diminishes your credibility of how many of those reviews are actually honest and the hype around your book, how much of it is honest and sincere. So it just, with self-publishing, everything falls on you. The book stops with you. It's really, really, really important to Um, upfront about absolutely everything. Um, start coming. I mean, there's nothing stopping you because the thing is as well is that if you if you do want reviews, why is my internet saying it's so stupid? Um, sorry, my internet is something weird. So even so, if you want to do, if you want to build reviews, reviews are really important for helping sales as well. But if you want to gather reviews, I would really suggest ho hosting book tours on your Instagram. Um, like that, you just put up like a Google form on your Instagram, on your website, and you just say, I am host, like I'm hosting a book tour, who would like to join? You will get a free book and in, in exchange for a review, easy peasy. And um, it'll just make things easier. Um, on the review issue, what do you think of services like Booksprout or Book Sirens where you pay for them to distribute ARCs? I'm not familiar with Book Spread or Book Siren. Um, I don't know. Um, paying to distribute ARCs, I haven't actually heard of. Um, uh, so I can't really offer any advice on that. Um, is it like NetGalley? Um, I've used NetGalley. NetGalley is fine because traditional publishers use that as well. So it's you're not you're not paying for a review on NetGalley. You are technically you are paying to be listed on their site and then people can review it for free. So that's the kind of loophole there. Um, paying to distribute ARCs, I, I wouldn't know. I don't I don't know about that. Um, I, sorry, I, I couldn't offer any advice on that. Um, but again, uh, if you don't want to pay for that, um, then you can just distribute them yourself. Um, unless they have like a catalog that they distribute to like NetGalley, then that, then that might be handy. That might be a great way to spread it out. Um, again, with, so the last point is, sorry, I'm running out of time. Um, if you decide to do wide distribution, um, another cost to factor in is that in your country, you will have to do legal deposits. So you will have to send your book to libraries, copyright offices, it depends on your country what they're called. In Ireland, they're called legal deposits, but technically they're a copyright office and libraries. Um, but this is a great way to protect your copyright because once you send your book to a legal deposit, um, it protects your copyright. It proves that you're the author because you have to do it within one month of releasing your book. But again, you might have to send of 10, 11, 12 copies, which is an added expense. So that's just something to consider, but it does help protect your copyright and prove that you're the author. So that is vital. Um, and nobody talks about it. 
I didn't even know I was supposed to do it until I released my second book. So look up in your country about legal deposits to send off. But it um, did I get another? If you want to join NetGalley, you have to be part of IBPA, which is like, uh, what does it stand for? Publishing Alliance. It's basically the self-publishing publishing agency. Um, I can't remember what it stands for. Um, and it's about 190 quid to join that. And then if you want to do NetGalley, it's like another 200 quid. NetGalley is very, very expensive. And the thing about NetGalley is that if your book is not edited to perfection, and if you have any errors net galley reviewers are ruthless i mean they're fantastic you could get a lot of reviews and they can be some of your biggest supporters but when i put crown to trader up on that galley the first edition oh i tell you that will make you cry in the shower so if you are going to put it on that galley and you are going to spend a couple hundred quid to put it on that galley your book has to be perfect it has to be perfect because they will destroy you and if you go on to goodreads then and it's all about, so say 500 people read your book on that galley. Amazing, fantastic. But if the percentage of that people didn't like your book, it drops you on where you're rated in Goodreads. So it's not just about reviews, it's about the ratio of your reviews. So even if 4,000 people read your book and half of them love it, half of them hate it, it's all just about number of percentages. It's not even about how many good reviews you have or how many bad reviews you have. It's about the percentage of reviews you have and the ratio between them. I hope that makes sense. Um, sorry, I covered it a lot. Um, I hope that wasn't too jumbled. If anyone has any questions, I only have seven minutes left. Sorry, I didn't get to. But um, but yeah, basically we've covered every. Basically, if you want to start again, you just you just gotta cancel your distribution and then do everything again. But yeah, advertising is the most and is the key thing, and just taking your time to invest in your book is really really important. Um, there's loads of other points. I am on uh, like that Instagram Callahan Writer. If you and, and like that, my website is callahanwriter.com. If you have any questions, you can absolutely message me if you want me to go into any more detail. I will send out the packet that I have that I'm looking at on the screen now, which has a few more points that I didn't bring up. Um, you will be sent that as well. So yeah, if anyone has, I just have a minute left. So if anyone has any last questions. Oh, again, my new book is coming out. Uh, my new book and the last in the series, um, When Traders Rise is coming out on the 22nd of February. So if you want to check out A Hellish Fairy Tale, they are on like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and anywhere you can get books. So yeah, or like that, if you want to check out my website, it's callahanwriter.com and it has all the links and everything there. Um, yeah, so that's everything. I'm glad it's been helpful. Um, uh, da, da, da. I think I might end it here, but uh, thank you so much to everyone who joined me. Thank you so much to Indira Indy Best for having me. I hope this was helpful. And again, if you have any more questions, don't be afraid to reach out. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all soon. And I can't wait to see all of your books. It, they're going to be amazing. Have faith in yourself. You're going to do fab. So thank you so much for having me. Bye.